Hey guys, welcome back to Team 6K. This is Undead, and today we're going to be talking about Infernoids. Before we get into the video, go ahead and check out our last video if you want to learn how to play Mech Knights. So, Infernoids are a collection of Fire Fiends that banish a certain amount of Infernoids from Grave to special summon themselves. The level 10 and the level 9 can banish 3 Infernoids to summon themselves. The level 7 can banish 2 Infernoids from Grave to summon itself. And the level 4 and the level 3 don't summon themselves from Grave but can special summon themselves from Hand by banishing one Infernoid from Hand or Grave. The downside is though that none of them can actually be normal summoned. The only one that can be normal summoned is Infernoid Decatron. If this guy is normal or special summoned, you can send an Infernoid monster from deck to graveyard, and if you do, increase this card's level by the level of the sent monster, and if you do that, this card's name becomes that monster's name, and replace this effect with that monster's original effects. So usually with the Decatron, when we summon it, we're going to either send a Deviati or an Anunku to the graveyard. If we send a Deviati, it's going to have have the quick effect that during either player's turn, once per turn, when a monster effect is activated, you can tribute a monster, negate the activation, and if you do, banish it. And if you send in a Nunku, it's going to have the quick effect that once per turn during either player's turn, when a spell trap or effect is activated, you can tribute a monster, negate the activation, and if you do, banish it. So, because of a Nunku and Deviati, Decatron can be either a spell trap negate or a monster negate that banishes, depending on which one you choose. The other downside, though, of this archetype is that the monsters that can special summon themselves by banishing other Infernoids from hand or graveyard is that if you control nine or more levels on your field, then you're not going to be able to summon them. So if you use that Decatron to send a level 9, it will be level 10. And because you have more than 9 levels on the field, you can't summon anymore. If you send a level 10, it's going to be a level 11. You're going to have more than 9 levels on the field, and you can't special summon anything from the graveyard. But if you send the level 7, it'll be level 8. And technically speaking, then you'll be able to continue summoning using the Infernoid summoning conditions. Because of that downside, though, if we have two monsters on the field, what we can do is turn them into link monsters that don't have levels. So not only are we removing the levels from the field or also basically setting ourselves back to zero on the level count because of that the majority of our extra deck is going to be link monsters the main one being dual little chimera it requires any two fire monsters because the whole infernoid archetype is fire attribute we also have nightmare phoenix to get rid of pesky back row which also discards a card to activate its effect which can be nice to get things in the graveyard the puzzle amino drop and deleter if a monster is summoned to the zone that it points to you can pick a number between one and eight and make that monster that level. So if you wanted to summon a Puzzle Mino, then summon your level 9 or your level 10 from your grave, then you could turn it into a level 1, and then you could keep summoning from the grave. Nightmare Unicorn, of course, is, is good for getting rid of things, either back row or monsters, and the fact that it doesn't destroy means that they won't get their grave effects and they won't have their protection. Borolo Dragon, get rid of things with pesky protection by stealing them when he attacks into them. And technically speaking, using a level 1 tuner, Decatron, yes, it is a tuner, and the level 7, Sightsimus, or using this Decatron to send a level 3 Harmadic to make itself level 4 and using a Petrulia, we can go into a level 8 Synchro. You can either choose Crimson Blader or Skylight Red Dragon Archfiend, it's completely up to you. But most people play Crimson Blader because if this card destroys an opponent's monster and sends it to the graveyard, the opponent cannot normal or special summon level 5 or higher monsters during the next turn. This can be fantastic in the mirror match, it can also be really good against Synchro decks. If you make this against them, they will have no follow-up play at all, and it basically guarantees that you have game next turn. That said though, Skylight Red Dragon Archfiend is still a great option. Once per turn, you can destroy as many special summon effect monsters on the field as possible with attack less than or equal to this card, then inflict 250 damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed. You'll play whatever you have or whatever you prefer, but with the amount of Infernoids we need to banish from our graveyard or our hand in order to summon our monsters, we're probably going to want to get a bunch of monsters in our grave. Of course, the Decatron itself sending one monster does help, because if we already have one of the boss monsters in our graveyard, then we can just send fodder to be banished for them to be summoned. But we do have other ways of getting Infernoids in the graveyard. The Void archetype runs alongside the Infernoid archetype as the spell and trap cards that support the Infernoid archetype. There are a bunch of other Void spell traps that you could play if you wanted, but for this deck's game plan, there's only three of them that we really want. The main one would really trying to go for is Void Feast. It's a normal trap card that sends one Void Spell Trap from either your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard to special summon up to three Infernoid monsters from your deck whose total levels equal exactly eight, ignoring their summoning conditions. So Void Feast doesn't care that these monsters want to be special summoned by banishing from grave, they just special summon them from the deck, but they have to equal a total of eight. 
So what you could do is the level one Decatron and the level seven Zytsimus, the level one Decatron, the level four Petrulia, and the level three Harmodic, two copies of Petrulia. And there are other combinations you can do using other Infernoids. However, we are pretty much playing all of the good Infernoids already. The main one we're usually going to be going for is one Decatron, one Petrulia, and one Harmodic. And why would we do that? Well, of course, we already know that the Decatron on summon will send either a Deviati or an Anunku to the graveyard and gain their effects. But the Petrulia has the quick effect that you can tribute a monster, then target a card in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. And Harmadic actually has that same effect. So you could tribute themselves or you could tribute each other. How are you going to choose between them though? Well, when it comes around to your next turn, they also have ignition effects you can use. Petrulia can target one back row on the field and destroy it. Harmadic can target one monster in the field and destroy it. So if your opponent has a card in their graveyard during their turn that you want to banish using either a Harmadic or a Petrulia, then you can use either of their effects to either tribute themselves or tribute the other one to get rid of that card. And the one that you tribute is going to be the one that you feel that you at least likely need to use in your next turn with their ignition effect. Void Feast cost though, the fact that you have to send a Void Spell Trap from your hand or face up from the field to the graveyard does mean that you have to play other Void Spell Traps, otherwise you can't activate it. Thankfully we have Void Vanishment, which is a continuous spell that says you can discard a card to add a void spell trap from your deck to your hand. Not only is this good for discarding your Infernoids, but it gives you direct access to your Void Feast and fulfills the condition for the Void Feast to be activated because you can use this, search for Feast, then activate Feast on your opponent's turn to send the Vanishment to the graveyard to summon three from the deck. The turn you activate it though, you cannot normal or special summon monsters except Infernoid monsters, which means that you won't be able to go into your extra deck the turn you use that Void Vanishment. Because it is a continuous spell, if it survives until your next turn, you might not want to activate it to get a bonus copy of Feast until the end of your link combos. Also, if an Infernoid monster you control battles an opponent's monster, after damage calculation, you can send this card to the graveyard and banish those monsters. So that's there to dissuade your opponent from attacking into you, otherwise they'll lose their monster. And it's also helpful that if you want to get rid of their monster, you can attack into them and get rid of theirs. Void Vanishment, however, is semi-limited, so we can't rely on it all of the time to be the cost of a Void Feast, so we do have to play other Void cards. The best one to play is Void Seer. It is a quick play spell that targets an Infernoid monster you control. That target is unaffected by the opponent's card effects this turn. So it can be helpful for getting around your opponent interruptions, but also it's a good card to discard from the hand to activate your Void Feast, because if an Infernoid monster you control would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead of destroying one of those monsters. Even with all of these void spell traps, we cannot fully rely on always having them, so we also have the one for one. Unless you send a monster from your hand to the graveyard to special summon a level one from your hand or deck. Of course, the level one would be Infernoid Decatron, which would then send one of your boss monsters, copy its effect to interrupt your opponent and try to keep you alive till the next turn. The level 7 Infernoid Saint Simus is only really here because we do need an Infernoid that does require two monsters to banish to summon it, and we also would like to have a level 7 to use it for, as Synchro Material for a Crimson Blader from time to time. Its own effect isn't that good, but it can happen. If this card attacks an opponent's monster, this effect can be activated at the end of the battle phase, banish one card on the field. And also once per turn during either player's turn, it has the same DD Crow effect as Harmadic and Petrulia. So now we understand the cards themselves, but just understanding the cards isn't really very helpful in understanding what the actual game plan of the deck is, so let's get into the combo tutorial, shall we? So when you're looking at your hand, there's two things you want to be looking for. The first thing is you either have a Void Vanishment in your hand, which will fulfill the conditions for Void Feast all by itself, or you want to have a Void Feast and a Void Seer in your hand. Just because you want to be able to send a Void Spell Trap from your hand or face up field to the grave so you can get your beneficial summons from the deck. In this situation, we do have the Void Vanishment. However, if we had the Seer and the Feast, then it would be the exact same situation. So we're gonna activate that Void Vanishment, discard a card to activate its effect, to search for a Void Feast and set it. And that is pretty much as simple as the turn one play gets because we're going to be doing most of the playing on our opponent's turn. So on the opponent's turn, we're gonna activate the Void Feast. Obviously, you're going to probably wait for them to use their back row removal to use it, or you will anticipate your opponent is about to activate a spell trap or monster that you would like to negate so that before they have a chance to do it, you're gonna use the Void Feast. And we're going to summon the Decatron, Harmadic and Petrulia from the deck. Then on summon, the Decatron will send an Infernoid from deck to graveyard. And we're going to either pick Deviati or Anunku. Unfortunately, we already had Anunku in the hand, 
so we had to discard it so we can't send it from deck to grave so we have to pick deviati here so now that we have all of these three on the field we are going to have three interruptions we're going to have a monster negate a banish from the graveyard and another banish from the graveyard so the opponent activates this monster effect i'll just let it go through so he didn't activate any more monster effects after that so maybe I could have negated it then, but I was saving it just in case he had a gazelle in the hand. But anyway, he's going to use his Sunlight Wolf to attack into my Petrulia. He feels safe that he can do that because he has a Bailinx in the grave to protect him. So what I could do is I could use one of my monsters to banish that Bailinx. However, if I tribute one of my monsters to get rid of his Bailinx, then the Bailinx will be banished my monster will be gone and then he will be free to attack one of my monsters regardless. But if I don't let it go through, then only one of my monsters will be gone and his Bailinx will still be gone. So I will allow the attack to go through. The amazing thing about the follow-up play is that the monsters remaining or whatever monsters you have in your hand can help you go into a link play. But of course the ignition effects of the Harmadic or the Petrulia, whichever you have left, you can also use them. The Harmadic can destroy a monster and the Petrulia can destroy a back row. So because we have a Harmadic, might as well use it before going into our link summon to destroy their monster. Of course, by doing so, we baited out their burning shell, which made them summon a Heatleo, which is great. It's better to bait that out than to let it happen mid combo. But then we can go into one of our link twos using these monsters. For example, Puzzlemino, the drop and deleter. Then we can resummon one of our big monsters from the graveyard, or technically, we could even summon a Systemus. And if we happen to have another Decatron, we could summon it and send either more fodder or a Systemus if we don't have it, or whichever boss monster we don't have yet. So in this case, I'm going to resummon the Infernoid Anunku, banishing three monsters from the graveyard. And I'm going to summon it to the zone that Puzzlemino points to, because I can use the Puzzlemino to turn it into a level one. And because it's a level one, it means we can continue to summon more Infernoids because we still control less than nine levels. On some as well, Infernoid Anunku on summon will destroy all other monsters on the field. Similarly, Deviati on special summon will destroy all spell traps on the field. The only reason, of course, that the Salaman Great Heatleo wasn't destroyed is because of the Burning Shell, but that's completely fine. We don't need that to happen. So I can use the Decatron to get more materials. I'll just send a Petrulia here. And now that I've copied Petrulia, effect I could just destroy that back row. Now I can special summon Systemus, banishing two monsters from the graveyard. And from here, now that I have three monsters on the field, one of which is a Systemus, we're going to see why Systemus is so important. I'm going to use all three of them to go into a unicorn. This isn't going to happen all the time, right? You're going to figure things out as you're playing. You're going to make your decisions as you're playing. This isn't a hard combo deck. The only hard combo in the deck is Void Feast sending any Void Spell Trap. What you're going to do from then on is take advantage of all the little effects that you get, all the summons you're going to get, the Nightmare Unicorn of course we can use that, get rid of that Heatleo, and because we have a total of three Infernoids in the grave, one of them being a Systemus, Systemus can banish two from grave to summon itself. Right? It's important to be able to have a Infernoid that regardless of its effect can just summon itself by banishing two from Grave so that we can more easily go for game. Because we're not going to have an issue breaking boards, we're just going to have an issue going for lethal sometimes. Because banishing three monsters for the Anunku or for the Deviati takes a lot of resources. So here we have lethal on board and we can just attack for game. So most of the time you're either going to have a Void Vanishment or a Void Seer and a Void Feast together. There are going to be some cases where we don't have either of those combinations and in those cases we're going to be relying on the Infernoid Decatron or the one for one that can summon the Decatron from the deck. So if your hand contains one of the three Decatrons, the one one for one, the two Void Banishments or Void Seer and Void Feast, then you're probably going to be fine, meaning that the cards in your deck that aren't going to be starting your combos in the deck are just going to be the one Ononku, two Deviati, two Harmadic, two Petrulia, and two Systemus, which is only nine cards in your deck, which means that 11 cards in your deck are going to be helping you to start off, which is a good amount for hoping that you get stuff in your opening hand. In this situation, we have the Void Feast, but we don't have a Spell Trap to send with it. But that's okay, we do have the Decatron, because regardless, we are probably going to have one of the things that gets us started. So we're going to Normal Summon that Decatron right now, and use its effect. And we're going to use it to send either an Anunku 
or a Deviati. The way to decide whether or not we send a Deviati or an Anunku is by looking at the opponent's character. It isn't a perfect rule, however, looking at the opponent's character can often indicate which deck they might be playing. If you look on Duel Link's meta and you look at a deck type, you'll see that skills that are most likely going to be used. And if you see those skills that are most likely to be used, you're also going to be able to see which characters use those skills. A lot of the time, competitive skills are only used by one or two characters, so if you see that character, there's a good chance that they might be playing the most popular deck that that character plays. For example, if you see a Yuya or a Yuto, they're most likely going to be playing Phantom Knights. And if you see a Zone, they're most likely to be playing Time Lords. And if you see a Jack Atlas, they're most likely to be playing Resonators. But regardless, whatever... But regardless, how does that help us know what to send with a Decatron? Well, if we look at any of those given decks, we can see what card in those decks would be most beneficial for us to negate and banish. For example, maybe Dark Magicians, who are most often played by one of the Yugis, we would send an Anunku so we can negate the Magician's Circle. But against a more monster-heavy deck, we might send a Deviati so we can negate their monsters. Learning about all the different decks in the game, skills in the game, and characters in the game is going to make you a better player overall, so be sure to do that if you haven't already. In this situation, I'm going to send a Deviati for the case of learning, and if we happen to have a feast in hand, but we don't have a spell, we might as well set it anyway, in just in case we top deck into another Void spell trap. So on our opponent's turn, they destroyed our Decatron in battle. We do have the skill Life Boost Alpha, which is intended to help keep us alive as long as possible, if we do happen to have one of those weird situations that we're relying on Decatron. But if they didn't destroy us in battle, we might have tributed the Decatron anyway to negate one of their monster effects or spell trap effects depending on the deck. But regardless, we do want the Decatron to get off of the field, because Decatron will have been a level 10 or a level 11 depending on what we sent. And as we already discussed, the Infernoids can't special summon themselves unless we have less than 9 levels on the field. So regardless, we wanted that Infernoid to get off the field. But now that it's our next turn, and thankfully due to our skill life boost alpha we are still alive, we have a chance to top deck a card, and very often is going to be either a spell trap to use with that void feast, or some other card that's going to help us get into a follow up situation. This deck doesn't actually have any hard combos. The only hard combo in the deck is to use void vanishment to get void feast, or to use void feast sending a void seer. The rest is going to be your decision based on what you have in your hand. And what decisions you make really have to keep in mind the amount of infernoids that you have to banish in order to get what you want to get. In this situation, I'll I'll go through what I can go through using what I have, talk through my thought processes so you can understand what I'm doing. So I'm going to use the Void Feast, sending the other Void Feast, summon a Decatron, Petrulia, and Harmadic from the deck. I can use the Infernoid Decatron to send any monster. I'm going to send an Anunku because I already have a level 9 in the graveyard. And I'm not doing this for the spell trap negate, however if they did have spells and traps it would be nice to do so. I'm mainly doing this to send the Anunku to the graveyard in case we need its on summon effect to destroy all monsters on the field except itself. But now that I have a Harmadic on the field I can use its ignition effect to destroy my opponent's monster. Not only is our field clogged, but we also have more than 9 levels on the field. So we can use our extra deck to open up our field and get less than 9 levels on the field. So I'm going to get rid of the two biggest levels on my field, that being 11 and 4. However, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if you got rid of the 3 instead of the 4. I'm going to go into do a little Chimera, because it just makes it easier to go for game. As you can see, I already have lethal damage on board, that being 19 and 21, equaling 4000. However, as you can see, I also have the ability to keep summoning my Infernoids. But if you don't have that many Infernoids, in that situation you would have sent a Sightsimus using the Decatron, so you can banish two Infernoids instead of three, so you could then link the Sightsimus off and then summon the Sightsimus again to have more damage. But because we have a lot of Infernoids here, it's not going to matter that deeply to me. So I'm going to banish three, usually the low level ones because they can't summon themselves from the graveyard. And Deviati does have the on summon effect of destroying all back row on the field. Of course the opponent doesn't have any back row, but if they did it would have made it a lot easier for us to go for game. But now since we have nine or more levels on the field we could link off again. We could even go into another copy, do a little Chimera, and then we've opened up our field again so we can continue to summon. So I'm going to summon Deviati again, banishing three, one, two, three. And because of the both of the dual little chimeras, his stats are going to be huge, and we can very easily attack for game. 
So this deck is fairly simple in its game plan, however difficult in its resource management. So that's definitely going to be something you're going to be practicing the most, is your resource management in this deck. Don't be afraid to send a Sightsimus instead of one of your boss monsters if you feel like if you're not going to be able to afford to banish as many Infernoids. But there's no substitute for experience, so let's just get into the replay, shall we? So here I am going against Time Lords. Unfortunately, I have one of those hands where I don't have, have the Void Feast combo. However, I do have a Decatron. And you'll find that if you don't have the Void Feast combo, you pretty much always have the Decatron. So we're going to normal summon that and send a copy of Deviati. Because I can tell my opponent's playing Time Lords because they're playing Zone. And Zone pretty much only plays Time Lords. And if I can use my Deviati to negate one of the Time Lords, I will also banish it. Because while the Time Lords cannot be destroyed by Battle of Card Effects, they can be banished. So he is playing the Time Lords. He's just going to be doing his standard Time Lord stuff. He's going to normal summon one, activate its effect. Then I'm going to use the Decatron, tributing itself to negate and banish the Micheon. On my follow-up turn, I'm going to be able to banish three. It will be everything, however, he's got a bunch of back row, and Deviati on summon can destroy a bunch of back row. He is going to be able to protect some of it, but not all of it. He's going to chain his infinite machine. He's going to shuffle back his thing to uh, set an infinite light, which is cool, but his stuff is going to get destroyed anyway. He won't have his infinite light, and he won't have his counter gate. And I happened to top tech a Void Vanishment, so now I can send that Void Seer to the graveyard, search for my Void Feast, set the Void Feast, and attack. He's not able to get a monster, but if he did get a monster, then I could have negated it using the Deviati. But now my main phase again, I can use the Void Feast, sending the Void Seer, summon a level 4 and a level 4, use Petrulia to get rid of that back row, and attack for game. So I'm going against heroes here, and not only do I have the Void Vanishment, but I also have enough to use Void Feast twice. The Void Feast isn't actually a once per turn, so if they are able to get rid of everything, I can still use it again. So, he's going to play. As soon as he does anything, because I know that he's heroes, I want to be able to negate spell traps in case he wants to fusion summon. So I'm going to summon Decatron, and obviously the two DD Crows. And the Decatron is going to send the Anunku so I can negate spell traps. He's just going to normal summon the uh, Neos and he's going to use the skill to search for his Super Poly. Unfortunately for him though, it's there's not really any Super Poly targets that work on Fire Fiends. So he's just going to attack me. But unfortunately for him, he didn't read Void Vanishment because if an Infernoid monster battles an opponent's monster after damage calculation, you can send this card to the graveyard and banish both of those monsters. So, now he's got no Neos, I can link off, and I can use both of my monsters to go into Nightmare Phoenix, destroy his crackdown, and because of all the Infernoids I got in the graveyard, I can banish three, resummon my Anunku, and attack him for game. So my opponent went first, and they completely ended their turn. That might mean that they are playing an OTK deck. They might be using hand traps to keep themselves alive. In the situation, not only do I have a Void Feast, but I also have the Decatron, but, and I can still use both of them. I can use the Decatron to send a Deviati so I can negate monsters, and I can set one of the Void Feasts to keep the other in hand to discard. He's going to use Red Eyes Insight, search for Red Eyes Fusion. He's going to use Into the Void to draw a card into the void to draw another card, into the void to draw another card, what a lucky guy. He's going to use jamming waves to destroy a back row and then a monster, so before he can destroy the void feast I have to activate it, send the other void feast, and summon a level 1 and a level 7 from the deck. This one, the Decatron will send a Anunku so I can negate spell traps, and because now the Anunku prevents him from using Red Eyes Fusion, he's going to scoop it up. So once you get the hang of this deck, it is very simple. Of course, the only thing you have to keep in mind is the resource management. If you wanted, you could also play Monster Gate, which allows you to tribute a monster, excavate cards from the top of your deck until you excavate a monster that can be normal summoned or set, special summon, and send the other excavated cards to the graveyard. You could tribute a Decatron to summon another Decatron from the deck, because it is the only monster that can be normal summoned in the deck. And in the process, you'll send a bunch of other Infernoids to the grave to banish to easily go for game. However, the card won't always be activated 
relatable, so I've chosen not to play it. But you can definitely go ahead and do so if you want to. At the end of the day, I'm not here to tell you how to build your deck, I'm just here to show you how to play it. If you have any other questions about Infernoids, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer you. Let me know how you feel about Infernoids. If you like the video, like the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I've been Undead from Team 6K, signing out. Hey, why they gotta hate on me? I done got me a quarter million views and they still saying they low key. They ain't wanna come work with the kid, but I'm flexing with Zay on beats. How they ask for a spot at the gym, but they leave all the weight on me. I don't ask them to wait on me. They would ask where they gonna be with a song if they wanted the weather man i ain't asking to pay no fees she was homeless and needed a spot i ain't asking to pay no lease i ain't asking to say no please i ain't asking to make no cheese scream fake but it ain't on me got clean so it ain't no streets why green if it ain't no keeps brought cream so it ain't no beef my team say it ain't no chief my demon they hang on me they seemingly ain't no peace i seen him he ain't no beef